BTC, B250C, USB, PCI motherboard, mining rig with 12 NVIDIA GPUs. Here you can see I have set up a motherboard for testing with 12 GPUs. You can see 12 USB cables plugged into the 12 USB PCIe ports. On this board you do have to use a 6-pin VGA or PCIe power cable to power the board. I have 4 gigabytes of RAM and a G3900 seller on CPU. Just a simple test setup with these six GPUs down here. Three 1080 Ti's, a Titan X, and two 1070 Ti's. And then I'm using six 1070 Ti's from this rig here. I've borrowed them. That's why I've kind of moved my frame over a little bit. It's in a slightly awkward position right now. Those are Asus ROG 1070 Ti's and Cerberus 1070 Ti's. Very simple setup, and it's working pretty good. I'll go through the general setup from generally installing Windows here. Setting up the partition, letting Windows install itself, flipping through the settings here. Once Windows is installed, you'll see that I have four GPUs plugged in right now, and I have a couple other drivers that I need to install. I started off with only four GPUs, as this board does use 4G decoding. So although I've got all of my GPUs plugged in, only four of them are powered on right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the NVIDIA drivers. I'm using the 390.77 desktop drivers here. Those are installed, so I'll restart later. You can see that they do show up. It does need a restart in order to get them to work properly. I'll plug in my network cable here. And then I'm going to update the rest of the drivers under other devices. So I'll right click on SM Bus Controller, click on Update Driver, and then I'll click on Search Automatically for Updated Driver Software. This will search the internet for my drivers. It'll install my drivers. You can see they have installed. Close that, and I'll install the next driver that needs installing, the PCI Simple Communications Controller. I'll right click on that, and Update Driver, search automatically for updated driver software again. That will find my driver and install it for me. And I'll repeat this process again. PCI Memory Controller, Update Driver, search automatically, installs the driver. Base system device, update driver, search automatically, installs the drivers that I need. Now the last driver I'll update is the Intel graphics. So I'll right click on Microsoft Basic Display Adapter, click on update driver, and then search automatically. That will install my drivers for me. There we go, Intel HD Graphics 510 for my Celeron CPU. So now before I restart, I'll go into my PC. Advanced System Settings. Under the Advanced tab, I'll click on Performance Settings. Then the Advanced tab again under Performance Options and click on Change Virtual Memory. I'll uncheck Automatically Manage Paging File and I'll click on Custom Size. I'll give it an initial size of 8,000 megabytes and a maximum size of 60,000 megabytes. That should be more than enough. You probably don't need that much. You can probably give it half that much and it'll be fine. I'll go ahead and shut down the computer. Then I'll enter the BIOS, press delete to enter the BIOS. I'll go to the advanced tab and then down to PCIe subsystem settings. Here I'm going to enable 4G decoding. Now I'll escape out of that, go to save and exit and save my changes and exit. Now Windows will start up and it'll probably freeze up a little bit on the start screen here as it tries to install your NVIDIA drivers. 
It may take a while for all your drivers to install. If you don't have them all installed, you may have to restart as I did here. You can see that I have 10 of the 12 installed. There are two more that still need to be installed. So instead of waiting for them to be installed, I'm going to right click on them, choose update driver, browse my computer for driver software. Then I'm going to browse the NVIDIA folder where the NVIDIA drivers were extracted to. I'll select that folder. I'll click OK. Click Next. It'll search that folder and start to install my drivers. This does take a fair bit of time usually to install the NVIDIA drivers. Just let it run. When it does finish, you'll see that your drivers are installed. Now all 12 of my GPUs are installed. I'll restart the computer for good measure. Now here back in Windows, you can see again, all 12 GPUs are showing up. 8 1070 Ti's, 3 1080 Ti's, and a Titan. Here I have EWBF Seek Miner, so I'm just gonna test it out with this to see if all of the GPUs show up. And you can see it does load all 12 GPUs from 0 to 11. And starts mining away. You can see all 12 GPUs are mining. I let this board run for over two days, two and a half days now, and it's been running solid. No restarts, no crashes. I really love the USB PCIe ports instead of using one times PCIe slots. I think that that eliminates one point of failure. Often with risers, the part that does fail is that one time slot connection piece. So getting rid of those, I think is a great idea. I still prefer using risers than those boards that have multiple PCIe slots. I just like the spacing on my GPUs to be a little bit more than those boards offer. I think the only way of getting that is to use risers and space your GPUs as you like. For motherboards that use risers for mining, I do think that USB PCIe ports are the thing of the future. I do know that one of the major motherboard manufacturers will be using USB PCIe ports on an upcoming board. So you will see more USB PCIe ports on mining boards in the near future. Overall, I think this is a great board. It's small, it's compact, it's easy to set up, and it seems very stable. I hope you liked the video. I hope it helped, and thanks for watching.